Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Here it is, long awaited, often requested video ever since I got the Tundra one year, a little over one year ago. I recently just posted the one year kind of update thoughts on the Tundra, my 22 Tundra. But ever since I got that truck, people knew I had the Tacoma, obviously. They've been asking, what's the difference? What would you choose, one versus the other? Can you compare this, compare that? What if you could only pick one, which would it be? A lot of those questions I can't really answer for you, but I am gonna kinda try to break down some of the differences in this video. There's some obvious ones. There's two different trucks, two different sizes, two different markets, uh, but I'll do my best to kinda talk through them, give you an idea of them. It's not an apples to apples comparison. This is the 2016 Tacoma, so third gen Tacoma. This was the first model year that they came out. I got it basically right when it came out and have owned it ever since obviously. And then this is a 2022 Tacoma or Tundra. So this is the third gen Tundra. I also got it right when it came out. Uh, and this, like I said, had four years. So they are the first model years of the new gens, but quite a few years between them. The current gen Tacoma has received a few updates from what I have here. So, you know, try to Try to factor that in. Real quick, both trucks, obviously I've owned this longer, not a single issue with either. No, I haven't had any catastrophic failures, no problems with this. Not a ton of miles, I think like 55,000 or so miles on this, 10,000 miles or so on this, but no issues, nothing's falling apart. This one's more heavily modified, much more used and abused, was my daily driver for a number of years. Now it's kind of a dedicated trail rig, but beat it up. It is never not once started for me. It is never not, double negative. It's always started. Yeah, it's always started for me. Never had an issue with that. Uh, same with the Tundra as to be expected from a new Toyota. I know a lot of people are like, oh, new Toyotas aren't what they used to be or whatever, but man, this has been nothing but reliable actually my old toyotas i have a couple old land cruisers back here they've been pretty decent but my old toyotas naturally you know those are both plus 200,000. actually the sequoia also a over 200,000 mile vehicle they hardly have any issues either but more than my brand new toyotas which just have zero issues granted you know once these are getting up into the 200,000 mile range maybe we could compare then but Toyotas, as people think, I'm not paid by Toyota. I have no association or relationship with Toyota. I just have a lot of Toyotas. I like them. They've been really, really good to me. I've owned all kinds of cars across all kinds of different brands. And Toyotas, true to name, they've been the most reliable for me. So we got two of the kind of iconic Toyota colors as well here. You can't see it because it's under a wrap, but I have the Tacoma in quicksand and then the Tundra is in army green. It's another thing, you can get some cool colors in Toyotas. Uh, it's kind of the Toyota AG1 green, actually. AG1, the sponsor of this video. You've seen them in a couple of my other videos. Kind of just a super food type nutritional drink. I kind of try to make it a morning routine of mine, just kind of pack all my, daily nutrients and vitamins and probiotics for my gut health and my energy and all that stuff into one easy to consume quick drink. And I've been doing that and I've been loving it. So it's super simple. You can mix it into smoothies or whatever, but honestly easiest to just drink straight up. So I usually do about eight ounces of water, one scoop of this baby into here. And then you do the hokey pokey and you shake it all about and then you drank it. Ah, and it's an earthy drink. You're not gonna confuse it with Kool-Aid or anything like that, but it's pretty good and very healthy. It helps with gut health, like I said, energy, kind of mental focus and clarity. And I'm on the move all the time. So it's just kind of my one, my, my one good thing that I know I'm gonna do for my body every single day. So if you'd like to try it, go to athleticgreens.com slash L-L-O-D. You get uh, five free kind of individual sample packets with your first order. I'm mean, on a whole year supply of vitamin D3 and K2. So yeah, athleticgreens.com slash L-L-O-D. But yeah, the army green, and then you can see the quicksand here. The quicksand, this tan color, 
kind of just two iconic Toyota colors at this point, my favorite colors, and they're just great. So real quick, I'll just do a quick breakdown here. They both have CBI off-road front bumpers. They're both sitting on Toyo tires. I work closely with a lot of these brands I'm talking about as sponsors on the channel or gear suppliers or whatever. These are 35 inch by 1250 Toyo Open Country MT Mud Train tires. These are kind of a step or two down. These are the RT Trails in 37 1250. Uh, this one again, Tacoma, a little more modded, full KC highlights all throughout. We do have some KC Flex Air 3s in the Tundra. Prince Hu roof rack. Prince Hu does make a roof rack for the Tundra. They both do have Diamondback bed covers. This has the front runner rack system. This does have the Yakima. They both have eye camper sky camps. This is like my daily driver, the Tundra. So it usually doesn't have a tent on top. I just kind of threw it up recently to test it out. This is the 6.5 foot bed, longer bed version, the Crew Max. I'll talk about the Crew Max, Axis Cab, whatever in a bit, but longer bed. So we got the bigger tent on here. This is the shorter bed, five foot bed with the smaller eye camp around there. This does have CBI sliders and a swing out CBI high clearance rear bumper all set up back here with some cases, propane, full-size spare tire. This is stock rear bumper, but I am gonna be putting on a CBI rear bumper soon. No sliders, which I kinda like the look of no sliders. And again, this isn't really my trail truck as much, but Ashley and Isabel do have a little bit of a hard time getting up in here. So I'll probably do the slider slash steps like I have on the Tacoma. So it's kind of a quick, quick rundown just to kind of get you up to speed. I have a lot of videos on both the Tundra and the Tacoma kind of diving deeper into the mods because there's our extensive more mods suspension, got Dobinson on there, a lot more stuff done to the Tacoma and then a decent amount of stuff done to the Tundra. So there are some very obvious differences to get out of the way real quick. The Tacoma, the Tundra is quite a bit bigger than the Tacoma. Uh, this is a half ton truck. This is considered a midsize or compact truck. Even some people will call it uh, the smallest truck that Toyota sells similar size to the Ranger, the Chevy Colorado, stuff like that. Bigger than something like the Maverick or an older Ranger. And then the Tundra is like F-150, Ram 1500, Silverado 1500 type size. So Toyota doesn't make a big one ton pickup, 250, 2500 plus size. So this is the biggest truck you're gonna get with uh, your Toyota's engines. They do both have similar size six cylinder engines. This is naturally aspirated, no turbo or supercharger or anything on that. Though they do sell aftermarket superchargers, or I think there's maybe some turbo kits on the market or some definitely coming soon. I saw Running for Tacos is working on one. This is from the factory, a twin turbo gobs of power. I love this engine. Uh, the 10 speed automatic transmission way a billion times better than the transmission in the Tacoma. This also comes in a hybrid option. This is not the hybrid option. I would pass on the hybrid option. Honestly, you don't get more, much more fuel economy. You get a little more power for sure, but you lose the backseat storage. The backseat storage is so clutch in this thing. If you watch my videos, you'll see I utilize that really well. And honestly, this is 37 inch tires, relatively built truck, a little bit of lift. They're both sitting on, this is about two inches of lift. This is about two and a half inches of lift. This drives fantastically. And I live at elevation, as you guys like to hear, I live at almost 9,000 feet of elevation here in Colorado. And still this thing has gobs of power. So this is, I mean, you know, it's not a, not a sports car or anything, but feels really fast. If you've ever driven uh, an EcoBoost F-150, very similar engines, very similar performance numbers out of the Tundra. So even with 37 inch tires, doesn't need a re-gear at all, shifts brilliantly. You, I never feel starved for power in this thing, even when I'm towing. This thing, notoriously underpowered. Obviously I'm pushing uh, a bigger, heavier setup with 35 inch tires. I do have 529 gears in this thing. 
Uh, you know, I have aftermarket exhaust, intake, I do have a tune on it. So I've kind of done everything to this vehicle to kind of bring the performance in line with what I would imagine it should be. And it's still just a dog. Am I surprised? It's a built truck. It's a small truck. It's built. It's on 35s. Uh, I mean, not really, but even bone stock, this truck is a dog. So performance wise, driving wise, the Tundra is way, 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 a thousand ways better than the Tacoma. There's no comparison at all. In the cabin, Tundra is quite a bit nicer as well. It's bigger, it's roomier. Obviously that's to be expected with a bigger truck. Has more modern amenities. Now I think the newer ones do have adaptive cruise control. This one does not. A 2016 Tacoma doesn't have adaptive cruise control. The Tundras do, uh, all of the Tundras do, but again, I think the newer Tacomas do. Adaptive cruise control is excellent for, for cross country trips. So I love that option. It does have the lane assist and all that stuff, but I think the newer Tacomas do. Mine doesn't. It's kind of like an old school truck kind of has regular cruise control. doesn't have any lane assist, doesn't have anything like that. They both have blind spot monitoring, all the parking sensors, all those things that you'd expect from the trucks. But the interior cabin, uh, just the whole driving experience of the Tundra is, is light years ahead of the Tacoma. Tacoma also has kind of notoriously bad seats. So there's a lot to love about the Tundra. The Tundra is more expensive though. It's not gonna do as well on trails. If I were to choose a dedicated trail rig on 95% of trails, the Tacoma is gonna be better than the Tundra. Is the Tundra a capable truck? Yes, it is, but it's longer, it's wider, has a longer wheelbase. It has probably worse departure and approach angles, I would imagine. And on a lot of trails, especially tighter trails uh, here in Colorado, Tacoma is about the biggest thing I would want to take on some of these trails and a Tundra just literally wouldn't fit or you'd be doing a lot more body damage. So trail, trail ability between the two trucks, I would go for Tacoma. They both have advanced four wheel drive systems. They both have a bunch of suspension options and off-road options out there, but I would choose Tacoma. It's kind of why it's my dedicated trail rig. So that's a point for the Tacoma. If you live in a place that has tighter parking, if you're driving in the city, if you have a smaller garage or anything where a bigger truck's going to be harder, the Tundra has a horrible turning radius. This thing is much more nimble in comparison. When I go back to driving my Tacoma after driving the Tundra, even though again, it's a pretty built up, like pretty large build 35 inch tire Tacoma. It feels kind of like a go-kart compared to the Tundra. Having said that, the Tundra doesn't feel massive. Like I had a F250 on 40s for a while. The F250 on 40s felt more bigger. This is gonna be some weird word usage, but the, the F250 felt more bigger than the Tundra than the Tacoma feels to the Tundra. So there's a bigger step up to a full size F-250 type truck. Like I feel like the difference between these, while it's quite a bit, isn't as big as like the Tundra 2 on F-250 kind of full size one ton plus truck. The huge advantages on either platform, and it's really just Toyotas in general, you have companies like CBI, a lot of other companies out there as well that make everything for these trucks. Suspension companies are always going to be releasing new stuff for these trucks. A lot of aftermarket companies just support this platform very well, especially if you're into kind of the overland off-road world. Those companies are going to prioritize launching products because these trucks are very popular in that market. While in F-150, the F-Series trucks outsell Tundras hands down, like a night, like a Tundra is a blip on the radar in sales compared to an F-150 or the whole F-Series line, you're gonna get more options for the Tundra than you are for the F-150 in this world, in this realm, because again, that's what people are using these trucks for. So a huge bonus to either the Tundra or the Tacoma platform is the aftermarket support, as well as just the user-based support. There's gonna be a lot of guys on Instagram, a lot of guys on YouTube or whatever that's, that are building these rigs right out the gate for these kinds of uses. But as of right now, there's gonna be more aftermarket support for your third gen Tacomas because they've been out longer than there will be for the Tundras. I mean, there's more support for the third gen Tacomas than there are for the previous gen 
gen tundras as well because the tacoma is just it's at a better price point it fits a lot of people's lives better so aftermarket in general is going to be better for the tacoma than it is for the tundra now in addition to the power i was talking about earlier again 35 inch tires on the tacoma 37s on the tundra the tundra runs 37s with really no problem this is a relatively mild lift it's more of a spacer lift than a true like suspension lift like i have much better suspension in here with the dobinsons uh, this is using mostly factory suspension but it, it drives really nice but to fit 37s you need to almost do nothing you need to cut a little bit here and you do need to cut a little part off the frame but it's very it's a very simple procedure versus the tacoma you need to do either a cab mount chop or i've done a cab mount relocate so that completely shifts this you pack a huge chunk out of the frame and now i can fit 35s no rubbing full lock everything like that but a lot more work to go to 35s and then you pretty much have to re-gear the tacoma when going to 35s versus like i said earlier the tundra is pushing 37s with no issues and no gearing like a boss so a lot more work to get bigger tires on the tacoma again naturally i feel like i've said this a million times it's a smaller truck so putting bigger stuff on it is a pain then you have bed length even on the short bed again not an apples to apples comparison because this is the uh i get the names mixed up all the time but i think this is the this is the crew cab tacoma so the bigger back seat with the shorter bed and then they have the access cab which is the smaller back seat with the longer bed versus on the tundra you have the crew max which is the bigger back seat with the smaller bed though you can get a longer bed option in that as well uh, or and you can actually get a longer bed option you can get the long bed with the crew cab on the tacoma so you can kind of mix and match these but kind of the default is short bed crew cab or long bed access cab versus crew max you get the bigger back seat and the smaller bed versus double cab which is what i have which has the bigger bed but either of the beds, the short bed or the long bed, the Tundra is going to be bigger. It's going to be wider. It's going to be deeper. It's going to be longer. You're going to have a five foot bed on the Tacoma versus a five and a half foot bed on the Tundra. And then the long bed Tundra is going to be six and a half foot bed. Long bed Tacoma is going to be six foot bed. So if you want to do something like this around the eye camp or sky camp full size, you see it's about the perfect size on the six and a half foot bed coming all the way up here you would have some overhang because again the Tacoma you're going to lose a half foot uh, and a little bit more if you factor in like tailgate width and all this other stuff so you're going to have a more of an overhang running a tent that size even if you do get the long bed Tacoma oh I did want to compare real quick this is a question I get asked a lot back seat of the bigger back seat Tacoma versus the smaller back seat on the Tundra. So this is my normal my normal seated position for driving in the Tacoma and we have quite a bit full hand spread here for back seat. And then also a thing to notice is the back seat of the crew cab Tacoma. This is a little more angled. It's a little more reclined here. There's more room at least leg room in the Tacoma than there's gonna be in the 2022 or 2023 Tundra. The Tundra backseat, I've talked about it in my Tundra videos, shrunk, uh, both the Crew Max and the Double Cab shrunk in 2022 versus the previous year. I hate that, because the previous year, uh, Double Cab Tundra backseat was about perfect. The backseat was probably close to Crew Cab Tacoma backseat size. So anyway, notice that, notice the angle, Notice the room here. There's also, I have a, sorry, I have a two thirds seat delete for my dog bed back here. So I'm only showing this side, but there's more room before the, between this console and where the seat is, much smaller storage space under the back seat of the crew cab even versus the double cab. Now the crew max back seat is cavernous. It's huge. So if you have kids and uh, a large back seat is a big, 
a big deal for you, I would not get the double cab. This is a truck that I drive primarily by myself. Like 98% of the time I'm driving this by myself and building the house, which a lot of you guys know, and I do a lot of stuff, live in the mountains. <laughs> you know, I try to throw that in every video. So I'm using bed space. So I prioritize the longer bed versus the bigger back seat. But if you want a bigger back seat, Crew Max Tundra, hands down is the most comfortable, most luxurious back seat compared to the Tacoma. But here we have same, same, you know, roughly where I drive. Well, this is where I drive and much less leg room here, almost no space behind here. And the seat is much more straight up and down angle. So it's not a bad back seat. I've sat back here, not actually for any drives, but just sat back here to kind of feel it. It's doable for adults. It's, I wouldn't want to go on a 15 hour car ride necessarily back here, but around town to the store, driving to the game, whatever, totally manageable. But the double cab, the smaller back seat in the Tundra is going to be smaller than the bigger back seat in the Tacoma. A lot of people don't think that is the case. I have both definitely the case, but much more storage under here than in the Tacoma. And I love that. If you watch my Tundra videos, you see how I have this thing loaded out. Love this storage, which you do lose in the hybrid model of the Tundra. You don't have any backseat storage because this is batteries now. So that sucks. Also, apparently you don't have batteries under the hood because they're back here. So hooking up winch and all that stuff is more problematic. There's more electronic gremlins. So I would pass on the hybrid and I would get this. And I forgot to say it earlier, they're kind of comparable specs. This is a limited, this is a mid-range spec, limited uh, with the TRD off-road package. This is a Tacoma TRD off-road. The, the packages are a little bit different between the trucks, but these are both kind of like mid-grade trucks. So they're, you know, about on the same level. They're actually, this is maybe even lower on the spectrum than the Tacoma because you got the Platinum, you got the TRDF Road, you got the Capstone, you got all this stuff. You got more luxury options on the Tundra than you do on the Tacoma. Uh, Tacoma 2016, you couldn't get leather. I do prefer leather, unlike some people, and Tundra is le like a leather, a leatherette. You do get heated and cooled seats in the Tundra as well. The cooled seats aren't as powerful as something like uh, in a Ford, but they're good. And I do love the cooled seat option. No cooled seat option, I believe, on the Tacoma. And I'm not sure if you can get, you might be able to get a newer Tacoma with a heated steering wheel. It wasn't an option on my year. This has a heated steering wheel option. Mine has a heated steering wheel. Absolutely love that. Also comparing the two in the Crew Max, you could get a panoramic sunroof uh, or a moonroof on the top. You can't get that on this. And then they do have both, uh, like the double cab has a power back window, a small one, same as the Tacoma. Current, my Tacoma power back window wasn't an option, the back glass, now it is. But the Tundra, if you get the Crew Max, you can get the Pano moonroof and then the whole back window goes down. That's a really cool option. So yeah, I don't know how helpful that was for uh, should I get this or should I get that? Tundra is better in almost every way as far as convenience, comfort, drivability, all that kind of stuff, kind of as to be expected. It's a higher price point, it's a bigger truck, it's a more premium product than the Tacoma. But if you have size limitations, if it's gonna be primarily a trail rig, and obviously budget is a massive factor to everybody out there, except some, some super rich people, I guess, uh, the Tacoma is gonna be more affordable. The payments are gonna be cheaper. It's gonna be easier to afford to buy cash or however you wanna do that. Love both of these trucks. I still own both of them. Obviously the Tundra has become my daily driver. And again, just driving the truck, the cockpit feel, everything like that. The, the Tundra is a much, much better product. You know, there is uh, rumors of the new Tacoma coming out. I don't know when it's supposed to come out. Okay guys, that's it. If you want more comparison videos, let me know. I do have a buddy that has both the double cab and the Crew Max 2021, the, the second gen, well his 2021 and before Tundras. And I could compare those for you if you want, because there were some notable changes between the two. But yeah, let me know, you know, as always, I say at the end of all my videos, let me know what you want to see and I'll try to make a video on it as always. Appreciate you watching these videos and 
and hitting that thumbs up button and comment and getting subscribed to the channel. And yeah, I love both these trucks. I know I repeated myself a lot in this video, it just, you know, is what it is. Cool. All right, guys, until next time, take care.